guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are troubleshooting an electrical problem. The outlets in the garage will not work. My husband rented a lawnmower and went to plug in the batteries. He overloaded the circuit and I've reset the circuit breaker. I have tested and reset the GFCI outlet and they will no longer come on. This outlet, I suspect, is the culprit. We've had some issues in the past. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna replace this GFCI outlet, and I thought I'd bring you along. So let's go. Circuit number 19 is my GFCI outlet in the breaker box, and you can see that is a 20 amp circuit. I'm gonna shut that off. So I've shut the power off. We're just gonna put this in here and test it again, and it says there's no power. I'll also use my voltage tester. I'm wearing nitrile gloves. They're not as protective as rubber gloves because they're thin. So you could easily puncture a hole in these. But they are protective against electricity. There are three sets of wires coming into the box. One carries power into the box, that is called line in. The other two sets are carrying power to other outlets on the same circuit. As you can see, the brass wires are pigtailed together and that is necessary because there's only one copper ground screw and you need to have a single copper ground attached to that screw. Looking at the back of your outlet, you will see that the line terminals are clearly marked. Your load terminals may be protected with protective tape so that you don't inadvertently attach the wires to the wrong place. When line and load wires are reversed, at the very least, you will lose ground fault protection. And the newer GFCI outlets will not even work if the line and load are reversed. The line in and load terminals are not always in the same spot on every outlet. So I am going to show you how to determine your line in wires if you don't know, in fact, which ones they are. Here is the outlet we are replacing. In this case, I have confirmed that line in is in fact at the top of this outlet. And you can see that by looking at the back of the outlet itself. The wire insulation should be flush against the back of that outlet and you can see both on the white neutral wires as well as the hot black wires that there's a little bit of copper exposed. So we are going to fix that too. So it's really important to determine which set of wires are the line wires. So I'll take my that's a line wire. That is not. That is not. This is our, this set is our line wire. So that needs to go in the line side. That has the power coming in. And these do not. So I'm gonna go turn the power off. The line wires are marked to go in the top screws. So I need to put those two, this set of wires into the top two screws. So the neutral wire, or white, goes underneath the silver screw. And I've got that fully seated. Tighten that down and then do a pull test. Put the black wire under there. Sure that's under there, good. That looks good. Use your thumb, hold it in place. Just hand tighten that and do a pull test to make sure that's not going anywhere. So now we have, these are line in. So that's our power coming in. So these are our load wires. So these are carrying the electricity to other outlets. I'm going to bring this in here. So 
hand tighten test, do the pull test, and we've got our last two wires. So we're gonna feed these in here and get this one started a little bit. Okay, and when you put this in, you really want to try to tuck your wires behind there. Try to tuck those down, make a little S shape. Keep your neutral away from everything else. You don't want it coming in contact with any of your terminals, terminal screws. And once you get those curved around a little bit in the very last part. You know, you're going to have to just push it in a little bit. Okay. You will go in here. Okay, let's go turn that. Ah, oh, the reset button worked. We have success. That's it for this time, guys, and as always, have a great day, and thanks for watching.